cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. What's next for God of War? Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and we're going to talk about what's next for Dad of Boy. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. God of War is one of Sony's biggest franchises, with its latest installment, God of War Ragnarok, shattering records as one of PlayStation's most monumental first party releases. As someone who listened to A Son's Path non stop while playing the game, Game. I could see why. Beyond the immersive soundtrack, its unwavering ferocity of combat, the intricately woven narrative, and well-written characters like Kratos coalesce seamlessly, rendering this opus a true masterpiece. I see you're deliberately attempting to push me into some sort of emotional outburst, aren't you? Well, I'm not so easily swayed, my good man. Stop with the stupid chime! To give a recap of God of War Ragnarok, the game occurs after God of War 2018, with Fimblewinter, the winter preceding Ragnarok. Based on the prophecy, Kratos and Atreus believed finding Tyr could stop it, as well as Atreus learning more about his identity as Loki. Just like God of War 4, Kratos' vengeful cycle of violence follows him as he's hunted down by multiple gods, Freya included. His relationship with Atreus is drastic improved as Kratos learns from his son what it means to be a good god. Ragnarok aside, what's next for God of War? There had been numerous leaks and rumors surrounding the future of the series. In God of War 6, Kratos would be embarking on a new journey, in a new world with new characters and enemies. Yet where would God of War 6 take place? Ancient Greece was a period of vengeance for Kratos, while the Norse realms were a period of redemption. There were rumors on what the two frontrunners for the next God of War setting would be, ancient Egypt, ancient Maya, and feudal Japan. When Kratos and Atreus are in Tyr's hidden vault room, they see different symbols signifying four mythologies on a tapestry. For example, there were pyramids on the tapestry signifying ancient Egypt, a place Tyr has visited before. There was a symbol representing Mayan mythology, the Omega symbol for ancient Greece, or Tori gates for Japan. Regardless of which time period the game may be in, God of War 6 will have a rich amount of myth and lore to explore. With ancient Egypt and Japan already explored in popular titles such as Assassin's Creed and Ghost of Tsushima, it seems plausible that the next installment could delve into Mayan mythology. This would entail vibrant armor, a plethora of treasures, and deeper insights in the era in which Mimir dwelt, while being tied to the enigmatic Norse realms. I do hope that witty, intelligent head stays with Kratos, Freya, and Atreus on their next journey and facilitate introspective growth together. Why did you never turn on Odin? But I did. I tried to stop him any way I could. Just lie! Many fans have proposed fascinating concepts for the next installment. For instance, Kratos begins God of War 6 in Midgard before getting pulled into ancient Egypt, or him returning to Greece with his son to atone for his past. Additionally, suggestions extend beyond the confines of a traditional God of War sequel, with ideas ranging from a Sindri DLC to an Atreus spin-off. Several leaks have suggested that Sony's plans for an Atreus spin-off game would follow a similar trajectory to the Miles Morales spin-off following the success of Insomniac's 2018 Spider-Man game. This could be as much of a banger as God of War Valhalla. If you want to help your girl with the watch time, I link the playlist to the Spider-Man videos in my description. As Santa Monica has opened 24 positions, I feel like the upcoming project will be much bigger than a spin-off with how long game development takes nowadays. If the next God of War or spin-off hasn't been kickstarted, we won't be seeing one for at least a few years. Aside from God of War 6, there were rumors of a God of War Ragnarok PC port, as well as a remake of the original God of War trilogy. God of War Ragnarok reflects Kratos forging his own path from a fearful, overprotective father burdened by his past and the loss of his wife Faye. He transformed into a god who wielded his power not to incite conflict, but to prevent 
prevent it. Mimir essentially described Tyr in this manner. However, what Tyr embodied, Kratos eventually assumed, a deity dedicated to ushering peace and prosperity throughout the Norse realms. The Norns ridiculed him, insisting that change was impossible and his foretold demise was inevitable. I enjoyed your story, Kratos. Pity it has to end so soon. Death never haunted Kratos because he believes that death will have him if it earns him. Yet, the weight of reality pressed upon him after slaying Heimdall. Nonetheless, he underwent a profound change, halted the conflict, directed his fury towards Odin and Ragnarok, rescuing the Asgardians and showing mercy to Thor. He bared his soul to Freya, acknowledging the complexities of his actions, but affirming that he harbored no remorse for saving her life. You are not the one who needs to die. And finally, he managed to confront himself, realizing who he has become, a god revered by all. And it was through Atreus that he became this way. From telling Atreus to close his heart, he acknowledges his mistakes and encourages him to open his heart to the Asgardians. After Brock's death and Ragnarok, Kratos could see his son gradually becoming like him, validating his long-held apprehensions. From his boat ride with his wife Faye in God of War Ragnarok. She was encouraging him to be better, that he is not his failures, that he is not his past. Therefore, he was ready to protect his son, become better, and free himself from the burden of his past. Him being ready to be that kind of person for his son led to a found family being formed with Brock, Sindri, Freya, and Mimir. And in Ragnarok, Atreus has formed bonds with other companions such as Angerboda, Skulder, Brood, and Fenrir. As someone who hadn't played the original trilogy before, observing the characters allude to Kratos' formidable reputation as a feared god piqued my curiosity about his demeanor in the earlier games. I I had a mental image from Ragnarok's references, but after taking a glance at the original trilogy, I could see that those games had an entirely different tone, especially the minigames. Observing the events unfold in the older games has made me understand more why Kratos was burdened with his past self, why he wanted to start anew with the sun and god of war 4, consumed by anger, vengeance, and violence. Kratos sought to numb the pain of losing his brother Deimos and enduring the deception of other gods. In a poignant exchange with Freya during Ragnarok, he recounted the heart-wrenching tale of being manipulated by Ares into slaying his own daughter Calliope and his first wife Lysandra. Their ashes branded upon him as a perpetual reminder. He became a pariah, feared by the entire pantheon, and wrought havoc upon countless, even his own mother among them. If Sony does remake the original God of War trilogy, I feel like that storyline would be interesting to explore as someone who loves Kratos and Atreus' character. Although, Sony would be hesitant to bring the original God of War's tones back due to controversy or backlash that could arise. So, there's a chance some of the content would be cut if a remake of the original trilogy were to happen. Cory Barlog was the mind behind the 2018 God of War game, bringing the Norse version back to life. So who would be taking the reins for remaking the OG God of War trilogy. It was rumored that Bluepoint Studios would be working on remaking the original trilogy, the same company that produced Demon Souls and Shadow of the Colossus. Christopher Judge, Kratos' voice actor, was asked to voice match Terence Carson, the VA who voiced the original Kratos. He informed the public that Santa Monica did not ask him to do the voice matching, but someone else did, which makes it more likely that Bluepoint will be taking over the remastered, remade project for God of War 1-3 with Santa Monica's involvement. It seems like the 20th anniversary for God of War could be celebrated with a remastered trilogy collection that will be announced this year or next year to be launched in 2025. And seeing that a company was making a God of War board game with an excessive amount of Greek figurines, I believe the trilogy will happen and this is a marketing strategy for it. Do you also love God of War games? 
Souls. What are you hoping to see in the next God of War game? Or let me know your opinions on the games in the comments below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and to stay updated. Would you play God of War now if you haven't played it before? And feel free to join my Discord. Thank you for watching, and that's all.